My name is Joe Capo, producer for Drake's After Dark on the Scorpion album. I'm about to deconstruct this beat for 247HH.com, King Beats. So I'm, I'm going to talk a little bit about the, the process that I, I took when making this beat and the whole story behind uh, myself and Static. I, I actually I made the, the actual track uh, close to a year before Static even heard it or anything. I was in a lab working on a loop. A lot of times when I'm creating, I hear, I hear it in my head first. And the loop started with the drums. Most of the time I start with the drums. I tap my beat out. I think, I think at that time I was using uh, MPC 3000. I added my classic stomp and my kick. I added the clap, the stomp. It's kind of like the stomp from Tip Tipsy, but it's a little different. I may have EQ'd it a little differently. I, I was talking to, to one of my producers, uh, Real Noise, and I was just telling him, and this was like months before the Drake record came out, before we knew anything about it. I was telling him that I'm, I'm back on my capo. I, I just felt like I was doing some of the, the best music of my life. And then for that rhythm, I added that hi-hat. And then to offset that, there's that, that shaker that gives the record that bounce. So it's kind of like a ballad. It's like the ballad and the beat. And then of course I added that 808. When I'm making music, I try not to get too technical, you know? It's more of feel. I'm all about vibe. If it makes me stand up in my, my living room or wherever I'm working, and it makes me walk around and I'm, and I'm dancing or I'm bouncing, you know, I know the vibes right, you know? That's when I think I make those special records. And it's when I allow the, the vibe to just, just come to me. I wasn't really thinking, but I was just going off a of vibe. It's all about the vibe. Sometimes it's more about vibe and feeling, uh, feeling the vibe and losing yourself. So myself and my guy, one of my guitarists, uh, Floyd, Floyd Tag Merriweather. What's up, Floyd? We were trying to come up with the meat of the track. And I, I remember telling him what, what key the song was in. So, so collectively, we, we worked out the the melody. And instead of trying to record it all in one loop, I broke it up. So I, I made him lay the first part, as you hear here. And then we laid the second part. And the second part was like more of the, the chord. Da -da -da -da. And then gave him the melody for the third piece. So now I pull everything into Pro Tools. Cause you know, Pro Tools is my go-to as far as where I want to chop my things up. I pull everything in and then I just start, then I just like to build puzzle pieces. I really like to make melody from sounds instead of actually using an instrument. There's a there's a sound in the in the track and it's actually a vocal sample. I just took it out for a second. But the vocal sample, I, I used to really do this a lot. I didn't I didn't know what sound I wanted to use, so I said, let me I just turn my mic on. And then I sang. Wah, wah. <laughs> So that's that's crazy to hear that in the record. So so the the story behind this track, period. This track has always gotten a lot of interest from different people. Uh, I, I think it just wasn't it wasn't meant to be their record. I guess it didn't happen. Yo Gotti actually cut a, a completely different song to this the same track. And the funny part is I never heard it. A year later, I'm in the studio with Static. We're actually at Circle House in Miami. When I knew I was going to be working with Static, this was one of the tracks that were at the top of my my list as far as what I'm going to play for him. I play the track. He gets in the booth because the thing, the thing about Static, he's a very just unique, unique talent just from the way that he sings right before he comes into actually what he's recording just to make sure he's on pitch and all these little tricks that I never really seen before. And it was just a, a trip to see somebody work like that as far as vocal. And he is definitely the, the definition of a vocal producer. So we're working. He gets in the booth. And he says, after dark. And I'm like, oh, that's all right. So he takes his time. He lays it. He lays it like four times. He tells us, uh, Steve Noah, what's up, Steve Noah? Give me four more. So we gave him four more tracks. And he's just still laying it. And it's not like he had to take time to really write. It's like, 
he's almost like a freestyle rapper. You know, he just comes off the top of his head. And he just laid piece by piece, piece by piece. And what I'm playing now is actually the original hook. So there's just a little little difference in the hook. And what Drake and Ty Dolla Sign did was they incorporated pieces from the front and the middle and the end. And you know, Drake added his sauce to it, of course. The, the thing that really surprised me when I originally heard the record was uh, Ty Dolla Sign. I did not know Ty Dolla Sign could sing like that. So I was, I was shocked. Back to how the record made its way to, to Drake's camp. So of course, you know, Static passed uh, 2008, I believe. And his wife is in charge of all his, of his music and everything. And uh, by Drake being a very, very, uh, you know, he, he was really a Static fan. From, from what I hear, the conversation was, you know, Drake wanted to do some records and uh, incorporate Static, you know, help his legacy live on. And, and that alone was just really important to me because he was just such a good guy. And it was just a blessing to work with him. So the crazy part about this is that um, when his wife gave Drake, Drake's camp the record, she had no idea who the producer was. Like no idea who the producer was. And uh, so they cut the record anyway. Drake cut his parts. Then they sent it out to Ty. The engineer that I know who mixed Ty Dollar Sign's um, portion of it, I think he told me that Ty did it at home or something. So, so crazy. You got this record that's coming from years back. Half of, it, half of it is done almost a decade ago. Other pieces are put together in 2018, and then you ship it to somebody in California. They didn't know who the producer was, so they had no idea it was me. 48 hours before the album was released, I heard that Drake said, we're going to put it on there anyway. It's, it's one of my favorite records. So we're going to put it on there anyway, and the producer will find us. Like three days later, I, I listened to the album, but I only listened to like the first half. And I got a call from one of my guys in Detroit, and he said, hey, Capo, your record's on Drake album. I'm like, yeah, right, what record? I mean, not that it's hard to believe, like I'm not dope, but at least I would know. You know, so I go back and listen and I'm like, oh, my God, that's static. Oh, you know, that's static. And that's the After Dark record. So I reached out to my guy who knows everybody, you know, uh, and he just directly connected me to the camp. And uh, we worked out our details. And that's that's pretty much the story. But it just shows you can't you can't really put a time period on anything. You just never know. You just have to keep putting those pieces together. And I, I always, always say that you have to keep planting those seeds and uh, they'll, they'll grow when they're supposed to. What this did for me was it, it really just gave me affirmation that the road that I, I've been on for, for a few years, that I was going in the right direction. And, and my mindset of, I, I know there's more I'm supposed to do. I know there's more lives I'm supposed to touch. Like I said, this, this record was just the, the record that let me know. That, that we can go and, and make this thing big. My, my dad passed in September 2016. And just during those months prior to the, the Drake record, I could just really feel his, his presence around me. I knew something was getting ready to happen. D didn't know quite what, you know. I, I have a lot, of, a lot of things going on right now. A lot of other projects that are getting ready to come out and you know, a lot of records bubbling, but I just knew there was something. 